فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحادي عشر نمبر 11 ان يشهد ان الصبر نصف الايمان that the person he testifies and he bears witness that patience is half of the iman فلا يبذل من ايمانه جزءا في نصره نفسه then the person should not put effort in يبذل من ايمانه جزءا في نصره نفسه he should not put effort in the cost of half of his iman in trying to retaliate and bring victory to his own self this is very powerful we said that patience is half of your iman don't spend your time and your efforts in trying to take revenge in the cost of the half of your iman allahu akbar fa idha sabara because if the person is patient patient فقد احرز ايمانه he has protected and safeguarded his iman وصاله من النقص and he's protected it from deficiency والله يدفع عن الذين امنوا والله يدفع عن الذين امنوا الله is the one who defends and deflects harm from the believers this statement of the sheikh which is ان الصبر نصف الايمان that patience is half of the iman is a statement that Ibn al-Qayyim took on in authoring a book regarding this because half of it is patience and the other half is gratitude and this was taken from the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam that the iman is these two halves and it's taken from the hadith narrated from Muslim in his sahih من حديث صهيب الرومي رضي الله تعالى عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said عجبا لأمر المؤمن إن أمره كله خير وليس ذلك لأحد إلا للمؤمن إن أصابته السراء شكر فكان خيرا له وإن أصابته ضراء صبر فكان خيرا له the messenger says عليه الصلاة والسلام fascination and amazement is in the affairs of the believer all of these affairs are good and this is not for anybody other than the believer <coughs> if he's afflicted or if he goes through a a good situation he shows gratitude and that is good for him and if he goes through a situation of hardship and pain and agony sabara he he shows patience فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ And then it's good for him. So the believer's affairs are either one of two. Times of good and times of hardship. Times of good, he comes with gratitude. And the times of hardship, he comes with patience. And every time his situation is good. And that's why he's always in a, time, in a situation of good. So this two us what? That half of your life is good. <coughs> and times of your life, or half of your other time of your life is what? It's hardship. You come with the required characteristics, which is gratitude, times of good, and patience at the times of hardship. This is where the scholars bring it from then. That the iman is half. Nisfan. Nisfu sabrin. Wa nisfu shukrin. Half is patience and half is gratitude. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did the same as well. He brought the two together. In one verse, He says, إن في ذلك لآيات لكل صبار شكور. and in this is signs for every person who is patient and has gratitude. and this has come in four places in the Quran. four places in the Quran where Allah unites and brings together صبر and شكور. so that's where the scholars brought it from, from the Quran and the Sunnah and from the أقوال of the Salaf of هذه الأمة. So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah here, he's pointing on that point, which is that the half of your iman, which is patience, why do you want to dismiss it? Just so you can gain revenge. 
Why would you lose your half of your iman in the cost of just revenge? So the believer is wise and he doesn't allow that to take place. الثاني عشر أن يشهد أن صبره حكم منه على نفسه وقهر لها وغلبة لها فمتى كانت النفس مقهورة معه مغلوبة لم تطمع في استرقاقه وأسره وإلغاء وإلقائه في المهالك. The Sheikh says in number twelve that the person he bears witness that your page, the patience that you come with is. Power and strength over your soul. The word hakamun minhu, the hakama in the Arabic language, is what's used for the riding beast. It's what you put in his mouth. In other you've got control over it. Waqahrun means qahr means you have power over something. Waqalabatullah again ghalaba means what? You overpower. So whenever you have control over your nafs, so, so whenever you have patience, is that you have control over your nafs. Pay attention. So what's beneficial if I have control over my nafs? What do I gain? فَمَتَى كَانَتِ النَّفْسُ مَقُورَةً Whenever the nafs is overpowered, and it's under your control, Your nafs does never. Your nafs then does not want to, and it doesn't have the intent and the desire to take you as a, as a captive and throw you in destruction. It can't do that. It won't desire that anymore because you got control over it. But whenever you you are obedient to your nafs, in other words, it has control over you, and you listen to it. And you're submissive to it. And you're under its control. Lam tazal, it will not remain except hatta tuhlika until it destroys you. O tatadaraka rahmatum min rabbi, unless Allah's mercy catches you and then stops you from it destroying you. Follow lam yakum fi sabri illa kahru li nafsihi wa li shaytani shaytani. And the Shaykh says, if Patience had no other virtue except that you are going to have control over your nafs and your shaitan. فحينئذ يظهر السلطان القلب وتثبت جنوده ويفرح ويقوى ويطرد العدو عنه. Then it will be enough. And then what becomes apparent? Is the strength of the heart. <coughs> and the firmness and the, and, the, and, the, and the power of the armies and he becomes happy. And it becomes strong and it eradicates and gets rid of this enemy. Your nafs gets happy. It gets strong. It grows until it can get rid of its enemy. Number 13. And ya'lama that you know. Annahu in sabara. If you show patience. فَاللَّهُ نَاصِرُ وَلَا بُدَّ If you show patience, Allah is the one who's going to give you victory. And that is necessary. That is, it's bound to happen. فَاللَّهُ وَكِيلٌ مَنْ صَبَرَ Allah is in the aid and the support of the one who is patient. وَأَحَالَ ظَالِمَهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ And the one who surrenders the affairs of his oppressor in, to Allah wa Taala, says, Oh Allah, you deal with it. Allah is the one who's going to help you and aid you. وَمَنِ انْتَصَرَ لِنَفْسِهِ وَكَلَهُ اللَّهِ And anyone who brings victory for himself and revenge for himself, takes revenge for himself, Allah then subhanahu wa ta'ala 
He leaves you with yourself. فَكَانَ هُوَ نَاصِرُ لَهَا And then you're the one who's going to give victory for yourself. فَأَيْنَ where is مَنْ نَاصِرُهُ اللَّهِ Where is the one who Allah is giving victory for him? إِلَى مَنْ نَاصِرُهُ نَفْسُهُ In comparison to the one who's giving victory to himself. أَعْجَزُ النَّاصِرِينَ وَأَضْعَفُهُ he is the weakest of the two in, want, in giving victory. Is the one who gives victory, victory for himself. Where did he get this understanding from victory is connected to patience? He got this from the hadith Imam Ahmad narrated in his Musnad. On the authority of Ibn Abbas. And Albani authenticated in his Silsila Hadith al Sahihah. That the Messenger said, Wa anna nasra ma'a sabri. That, pay, that victory is with patience. That victory is with patience. And also the fact that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he went by, when he came by Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, some of the Sahaba is being tortured. And then he told them, where Islam is going to reach and the strength and the power that Islam is going to have. What did the messenger say to him? Or what did the Prophet say to them? He said, وَلَكِنَّكُمْ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ You are being hasty. This is going to happen for you. حَتَّى يَسِيرَ الرَّاكِبُ مِنْ صَنْعَاءِ لَا حَذْرَ مَوْتِ لَا يَخَافُ And the person doesn't fear إِلَّا الذِّئْبُ مِنْ غَلَمِهِ he only fears a wolf to eat his, his herd of sheep or goats. But you are being hasty. This is going to happen. But stop being hasty. Be patient. So the victory will come. Don't be hasty. And that's why you find Muslims today, they want every single thing to happen overnight. And the Shaykh is going to bring that point, inshallah soon. Number 14. And nasabrahu that you also bear witness that your patience, ala man adahu, your patience on the one that's harming you, and your endurance, and your endurance <coughs> brings this oppressor from his oppression and makes him regret what he was doing. So when you show patience and you, you show endurance, it makes your opponent or it makes the person who is harming you, the oppressor, to come back from his oppression and it makes him regret what he was doing and it also makes him seek forgiveness. And he becomes فَيَعُودُ بَعْدَ إِذَائِهِ After the hardship that he's put you through or he's put through others. What does it do? It brings him back to as a mustahyin, a shy person. Nadiman, regretful. عَلَى مَا فَعَلَهُ In that which he has done. بَلْ يَسِيرُ مُوَالِيًا لَهُ And rather, he may even be a wali, an ally of yours who helps you, who supports you. And that's what Allah said in the ayah, in Surah Al-Fusilat, ayah 24 to ayah, sorry, ayah 34 to ayah 35. إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٌ Until he becomes a wali, hamim, a brother, beloved to you. So this is a powerful, powerful trait. Number 15. Number 15. Rubbama it is possible. كان انتقامه ومقابلة سببا لزيادة شر خصمه وقوة نفسه. It may be possible 
that your revenge and your retaliation, it could be a reason for him to increase in evil, for him to increase in strength and power and hard-headedness, stubbornness, and also for him to plan and plot different types of ways to harm the creation. كما هو المشاهد as it's seen today, as it's known and we all know and we all see the Sheikh saying. But if the person فإذا صبر وعفى أمن من هذا الضرر But if you forgive and you forget then you are safe from him having to put you through another harm. والعاقل the smart one لا يختار أعظم الضررين بدفع أدناهما The smart person does not choose the greater of the two harms whilst trying to deflect the lesser of the two. What does he mean by it? It means that you're defending yourself which is the lesser of the two. You're defending of yourself. The harm that he's put you through is lesser of the greater harm that's going to come. So you go in to him and try and take your rights back is a harm and it's a lesser. And then you're, you're choosing over the greater harm of him having to come back with a greater. وَكَمْ قَدْ جَلَبَ الْإِنْتِقَامُ وَالْمُقَابَلَةُ مِنْ شَرِّ How many times has revenge and retaliation brought a greater evil? عَجَزَ الصَّحِيبُ عَنْ دَفْعِهِ Then it became harder for you to then repel it. وَكَمْ قَدْ ذَهَبَتْ نُفُوسِ And how many lives have been lost? وَرِئَاسَاتِ And leadership and positions. Leaders were lost. وَأَمْوَالْ and wealth. لَوَعَفَ الْمَظْلُومِ لَبَقِيَتْ عَلَيْهِ If the oppressed one was to forgive, all of that would have remained and none of that would have gone. Allahu Akbar. Isn't that something that's mushahad? It's something mushahad we all see. Something we all see. Number 16. Number 16. أَنَّ مَنِ اعْتَادَ الْإِنْتِقَامِ وَلَمْ يَصْبِرْ لَا بُدَّ أَنْ يَقْعَ فِي الظُّلْمِ Pay attention. The person who may sit his norms to take revenge and does not show patience and doesn't come with it, it is no, it, there's no doubt that he's going to have to fall into oppression himself. He's going to take more than his rights. لا بد أن يقع في الظلم It is necessary that he's going to, it is, no, there's no doubt he's going to fall into oppression. Why? فَإِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَا تَقْتَصِرُ عَلَىٰ قَدِّرِ الْعَدْلِ الْوَاجِبِ لَهَا لَا عِلْمًا وَلَا إِرَادَةً Because the nafs, the way it's made, is does, it does not shorten itself. It doesn't stick to, to the justice that was restricted for it, or the rights that it had. It doesn't restrict itself to it. It doesn't stick to the adl al-wajib, the justice and the rights that you had. You won't stay within that boundary. لا لا علما ولا إرادة. Not in terms of knowledge, and of course not in terms of will. وربما عجزت عن الاقتصار على قدر الحق. Rather, you may even become weak to shorten yourself or to restrict yourself to that which is حق your حق your rights. You become unable to. You can't because a person has put you in a predicament. Where you now have to become even harder. Uh, you're unable to. فَإِنَّ الْغَضَبَ يَخْرُجُ بِصَاحِبِهِ إِلَى حَدٍ إِلَى حَدٍ لَا يَعْقِلُ مَا يَقُولُ وَيَفْعَلُ Because the anger that comes from you, it will push you to a limit where you lose your intellect. And you forget what you're saying and that which you're doing. فَبَيْنَمَا هُوَ مَظْلُومٌ When you were just the one who was oppressed right now, يَنْتَظِرُ النَّصْرَ 
and you were only waiting to get victory and honor from this, إِذَنْ قَالَ بَظَالِمًا The tables got turned. You now became the oppressive oppressor. You became the oppressor. يَنْتَظِرُ الْمَقْتَ وَالْعُقُوبَةً Who is now awaiting the destruction and the, uh, and the wrath of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And this amount that the person may increase in on, it can even be very little. It doesn't matter. But the reality is, this is the, this is the reality of our nafs and the way it is. And you know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which is what? The halal is clear and the haram is clear. وَبَيْنَهُمَا أُمُورٌ مُشْتَبِهَاتٍ لَا يَعْلَمُهُنَّ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ فَمَنِ اتَّقَ الشُّبُهَاتِ فَقَدْ اسْتَبْرَعَ لِدِينِ وَعِرْضِهِ وَمَنْ وَقَعَ فِي الشُّبُهَاتِ وَقَعَ فِي الْحَرَامِ كَالْرَاعِ يَرْعَى حَوْلَ الْحِمَى يُشِكُ أَيَرْتَعْفِ If the person keeps dwelling and going over one point all the time and trying to get his rights and trying to get what, what was his as you are going around finally you fall into it which is to become the oppressor and the tables turn from being the oppressed you turn to becoming the oppressor from being one who is trying to bring your nafs Victory, you've become a person who brought his nafs, destruction and wrath of Allah wa ta'ala. Number 17, number 17. The Shaykh says, أَنَّ هَذِهِ الْمَظْلَمَةَ الَّتِي ظُلِمَهَا هِيَ سَبَبٌ هِيَ سَبَبٌ إِمَّا لِتَكْفِيرِ سَيِّئَتِهِ أَوْ رَفْعِ دَرَجَتِهِ This oppression you should also bear witness that this oppression that you have been put through, the reason why Allah wa Taala wants this to take place for you, it is be, either can be to expiate your sins for you and to make you without sins or even lessen your sins, or rafi darajati. Allah wants to lift you up stations and ranks. But if you then take matters into your own hand and you take revenge, and you don't show patience, then you're not going to get expiation for your sins. And you're not also going to receive stations being raised up for you. You're going to lose that. Because you took matters into what? You took matters into your own hand. Number 18. The Shaykh says, أن عفوه وصبره من أكبر الجند له على خصمه. Number 18. That you also need to testify and bear witness that your forgiveness and you turning a blind eye and being patient is from the greatest strength and the greatest army that you have actually used against your opponent. فَإِنَّ مَنْ صَبَرَ وَعَفَى For verily the one who is patient and the one who forgives كَانَ صَبُرُهُ وَعَفُهُ Your patience and your forgiveness is what? مُوجِبًا لِذُلِّ عَدُوِّهِ وَخَوْفِهِ وَخَشْيَتِهِ مِنْ هُوَ مِنَ النَّاسِ The person who comes with patience and forgives and forgets. Your patience and your forgiveness necessitates and brings humiliation to your enemy and fear you place in him and also the rest of the people. Because the Sheikh said something. فَإِنَّ النَّاسَ For verily the people لَا يَسْكُتُونَ عَنْ خَصْمِهِ The people will not be quiet in speaking against your opponent. They're going to blame him. Oh, are you the person who did this to him? A'udhu Billah. And you still feel good walking around know you've done this to Fulan and Alan. So he will live a very tight life. But when you take matters into your own hand and you take revenge, the people won't say that to you. You got your rights back. 
And the Sheikh says, وَلِهَادَا تَجِدُ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ And because of that you find a lot of people. إِذَا شَتَمَ غَيْرَهُ If somebody else insults them, أو آذاه or somebody else harms them, يحب أن يستوفي منه He likes to take his rights back from him. فَإِذَا قَابَلَهُ إِسْتَرَاحَ وَأَلْقَ عَنْهُ ثِقْلًا كَانَ يَجَدِهُ And if he retakes his, if he takes his, if he takes his, what do you call it? And, it, and take, sorry, if he gives him back, if he takes revenge, sorry, if he takes revenge, he finds joy, and a very heavy load is taken from him. You find a lot of people like that. But the reality is, <coughs> the people are the ones who are going to do that for you. Number 19. The Sheikh says, أَنَّهُ إِذَا عَفَ عَنْ خَصْمِهِ إِسْتَشْعَرَتْ نَفْسُ خَصْمِهِ أَنَّهُ فَوْقَهُ وَأَنَّهُ قَدْ رَبِحَ عَلَيْهِ فَلَا يَزَالُ يَرَى نَفْسَهُ دُونَهُ وَكَفَى بِهَذَا فَضْلًا وَشَرَفًا لِلْعَفُوِ The Sheikh says number 19 If you forgive your opponent Your opponent's nafs He starts to feel That you are above him That you are higher than him And that you have succeeded and he will see himself to be very low. And the Sheikh says, وَكَفَى بِهَذَا فَضْلًا وَشَرَفًا And that is enough for honor and, 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 and nobility. Al-Ishroon, the last one, the twentieth one. أَنَّهُ إِذَا عَفَى وَصَفَحَ كَانَتْ هَذِي حَسَنَةً If you forgive and you forget and you let go, this is a reward. كانت هذه حسنة. It's an act of reward. فتولد له حسنة أخرى. This will then inherit you another act of good. وتلك الأخرى تولد له أخرى. And that act will then give birth to another righteous act. وهلم جرا and let it go on. Because we know acts of good give birth to another act of good, and doors of good just keep opening. فَلَا تَزَالُ حَسَنَاتُهُ فِي مَزِيدٍ And then all your acts of obedience are just growing. فَإِنَّ مِنْ ثَوَابِ الْحَسَنَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ Because from the reward of good is another good to be done. كَمَا أَنَّ مِنْ عِقَابِ السَّيِّئَةِ Because from the punishments of sin is a السَّيِّئَةُ بَعْدَهَا Another sin that it gives birth to. Remember when you lie, you lie again. Just to, to help the previous lie or to kind of cover the previous lie and then another one and another one and another one. The same is with good. An act of good will always bring you another act of good. وَرُبَّمَا كَانَ هَذَا سَبَبًا لِنَجَاتِهِ وَسَعَادَتِهِ الْأَبَدِيَّةِ And the Sheikh said this could probably be the reason of prosperity and successful life uh, in turn, ex uh, 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 infinite success and a prosperity. But if you give victory to yourself or you take revenge, you lose all of that opportunity. And you won't gain that. <coughs> this was the advice that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah gave to help and aid a person to be patient with uh, الخلق, the harms that the creation can put you through. And the Shaykh mentions in this powerful meanings and it is upon every Muslim to observe it, to benefit from it, so it can help him in the course of his life. And to also try to be one who fulfills the station. Sheikh Abdul Razak 
Ibn Abdul Muhsin Al Abbad, who explained this particular book, he gives an advice at the ending, which I'm going to conclude with. He says, Wa usi fil khitami bi wasiyataini. So Abdul Rizak says, I give advice or two advices as a final conclusion. He said, Al Ula, the first advice that I give after he explained the book, he said, I give two advices as a final conclusion. The first of the two is, أن يعيد النظر في هذه الأمور العشرين التي ذكرها رحمه الله تعالى. That a believer, he continuously goes over these twenty advices, these twenty ways to attain patience from the harm of the creation. To always look at it. وأن يتأملها بأنات وحسن تفهم لها. And try to look at it and observe it calmly. Take your time. Why? So it can settle into your heart properly. And the second one he mentions is that we all strive that we strive to spreading these benefits that the Sheikh mentions here. And he mentions وَوَسَائِلِ النَّشْرِ and he said, the, play, the ways that you can spread it has now become different in forms and ways. In social media, to benefit from that and spread it. Also to write it. If it hasn't been translated, to try to translate it. For verily, the one who shows good is like the one who did the good. If you show the people the good, and then they go and do it. You are like you doing the good with them. As our Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, on the authority of Abu uh, Abi Mas'ud al-Ansari, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. I conclude that, inshallah ta'ala, As'alullah al-Azim an yahdiyana wa sa'ira ikhwanina siratahu al-mustaqeem. Sirat al-ladheena an'am Allahu alayhim من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا وحسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا